face that this world has forgotten. Mm. What is up, guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better. And this week, we're looking upon the two grass exclusive typing combination being Grass Ground in Torterra and Grass Rock in a Cradle E. Now, these two are actually introduced back to back as one another Cradle E for Generation 3 and, of course, for Torterra Generation 4. And uh, have been on par with one another when it comes to their usage. They're used in a similar way, though in different fashion. And even with their hidden abilities introduced, their viability has been on par with one another, being that they actually check a very, very select few higher tier Pokemon, but on their own, really does kind of stumble due to the combination itself not being the best overall. That said, these combinations do resolve a few things for either of the typing combinations. While they're good on their own, they aren't able to keep up with the remaining meta. But that said, they still have a very, very strong niche in the higher tiers and definitely lead. So that said, we're going to go over the stats, abilities, and move pool to see which one of these two are really better. So let's first go over their typing. Now we're going to start with Cradle Lee, and this should really be stated when it comes to grass rock combination. It is a very good defensive typing for both grass and a rock type. What I'm trying to say with that is that as a grass Pokemon, you lose your actually weakness to fire, while as a rock type, you lose your weakness to ground, water, and grass due to grass combination. So overall, this is a very good combination, but it doesn't resolve enough since it actually gets neutral hits instead of actually resisted hits. So resistances here are electric and normal, both being primarily to each of the typing, being grass and of course rock. But the weakness from grass are remaining, which are bug and ice. And of course, weaknesses from um, rock are still remaining in fighting and steel. But overall, I would say this combination is one of the stronger combinations in the game for a possible grass type. That said, it leaves a lot defensively to be desired since you are hitting yourself more neutrally than resistantly, which is something that makes a Pokemon such as this really, really need to predict a whole lot to be able to resolve possible issues. That said, this combination is very, very unique, very, very unfortunate that it hasn't been revisited because I do believe this is about a good defensive and offensive typing. Now, enter Torterra. The grass ground combination is one of the strongest ones in the game. Not defensively, by god, not defensively at all. Since immunity here are in electric, ground, and rock, it definitely should be said here that due to grass typing combined with ground, it does resolve the water issues, but that's pretty much it. There aren't necessarily anything that are resolved outside of the remaining possible resistances. Uh, weakness here, bug, fire, flying, and of course, very weak to ice. These are, of course, all common traits of actually uh, the grass type, which definitely shows this ugly color here in the bug fire of flying. And of course, the builds are weak to ice, making Torterra a very, very hard defensive Pokemon to use. Offensively, grass and ground are very good, primarily because, let's face it, ground type in the regular do tend to struggle against the likes of the water types, but with this combination, you're able to hit them and hit them fairly hard. And given with the stabs in mind, this is a very, very good offensive type. And let's say the type combination is a very, very tough combination overall. And really, it just, just become a very, very glorified ground type with a lot more weaknesses than they usually do. So with the typing is out of the way, let's actually look over their stats. And quite frankly, they're kind of similar here. Cradley has a lot of HP at 86, Tortora has a little bit more, 95. Offensively, 81 on Cradley versus 109 on Torterra, so Torterra does hit a lot harder than Cradley could ever do. Defensively, we have 97 on Cradley versus 105 on Torterra, so even here, Torterra stands out a little bit more due to the extra offensive defense there. And then after that, we have a special attack, 81 versus 75, so Cradley is specially offensively stronger. Then when it comes to special defense, we have a leap here from Cradley, 107 versus 85. So it definitely showcased that it can soak hit special defensively a lot better than Torterra. And then we have the speeds here where we have 43 on Cradley versus 56 on Torterra. So I would say while Cradley is a slow Pokemon, Torterra is also slow Pokemon, but does bar a few speeds here stronger. And other than that, it's very clear there that Torterra overall could be considered more defensively and offensively more capable, but Cradley, as stated before, has probably the better defensive typing, so 
being able to soak those special defensive hits is really strong for it since let's face it the physical defense is not something you're going to rely on if you're going to be hit with something like bug bus or ice beam you're better off having cradle lease defensive type in there for making a special defense a lot more desirable than physical defense since let's face it the weaknesses that Terra does have does not necessarily focus on physical damage overall outside of possible flying but overall, I would say due to the offensive nature of Torterra, it does really seem to be the Pokemon that really hits harder. So while it isn't the speediest threat on the field, it's definitely something that is very hard to switch into. And as stated before, Grass Ground Stab, very dangerous, very dangerous for most teams. And uh, Cradley does not have that punching power and is forced to actually be more defensively capable. So it has the stats to pull that off, while Torterra, on his other hand, has more offensive presence than Cradley could ever have. So last but not least, let's actually talk about their abilities and I'm going to start with Cradley, which for a long time had only suction cups, which makes sure that you can't be forced out with Whirlwind or Roar, which is kind of fine. I mean, that definitely means you can set up such a stockpile and stuff like that with relative ease, um, but its hidden ability has a lot more desirable being Storm Drain, which raised your course. Uh, special attack by one if you're hit by a water move and it also makes you immune to water moves as a whole giving you one more possible resistance to actually capitalize on so this guy is definitely Rodan's worst nightmare or the wash specifically even lanterns it's, let's face it it does resist its later hits and pretty much have immunity to the filler moves in his other stabs so Cradley's ability I would say make it a very good defensive response to a few select Pokemon and overall makes it a good desirable Pokemon for the abilities alone that said, let's actually look at Torterra. Torterra's abilities are, well, let's frank, let's be frank here and say just as it is, there are a lot more underwhelming. Overgrow and Shalama. Overgrow, which boosts your stabs by 50%, once you're below 30% of your HP, which is all right. It does definitely dish out more damage towards that than definitely are a more a retaliation move, possibly with Torterra in mind, and probably the stronger between these two, because the other one is Shell Armor, which makes sure you can't get critted as long as this ability is active. That said though, with so many weaknesses, I wouldn't worry about the crits in the first place, because most of the things will damage you a lot anyway, even without it. So yeah, I wouldn't say Shell Armor is the best in ability for Tor Torterra, and definitely is holding it back somewhat, and definitely make really the more desirable ability-wise Pokemon between these two. But as you all know, a Pokemon is only as strong as this move will make it out to be. So with that said, let's first go over what they share between one another. And then, of course, let's see what makes them exclusive. Because quite frankly, between these two, the exclusive move is what they actually make it or break it. Now, when it comes to the shared stabs, they actually are fairly interesting when it comes to that. Because both get access to the likes of Giga Drain, both get Seed Bomb, and even both get Earthquake and Stone Edge. So with that out of the way, one thing that really does define these two is their point of actually getting Stealth Rocks up. They both do this really well, and both clearly get it. So, very, very good perk onto them. When it comes to recovery, they both get the likes of Synthesis, and of course, to set up moves, they both get Curse. Which, due to low speed, is actually not a, such a bad deal, really, because boosting their attack and defense really just boot these Pokemon up fairly well. And if you don't want to capitalize on that, you also have a set of moves in Amisha. I mean, quite frankly, it's the actual special defense to pull that off, and Amisha really does enforce that. So they have the ability to actually boost their both defenses in their respective own fashion. And the last two set of moves are both Rock Polish and Sword Stance, which respectively boost your speed by two or boost your attack by two. Both of these Pokemon can capitalize on this fairly well, mainly Torterra with Rock Polish, but Sword Stance is definitely beneficial for both of them, depending on what route you want to take on with Compton offensively. That said though, the last move I really should mention is Earth Power, which both really can benefit on, depending on what offensive route, as stated before, you want to go with. It definitely should be stated though that both connected Rock Polish definitely can change some factor between them, depending on the matchup that you will be facing. Now that said, let's talk about Crater Lee's unique move pool on its own first. Now when it comes to Crater Lee, it is a Pokemon with very very unique move pool overall. Uh, first and foremost, I really have to mention its stab Asian power. This is sadly its strongest rock stab it does get, that's how it likes of Stone Age on the physical side. We don't get Power Gem, and I definitely believe this is something that holds it back a little bit. Asian Power is still a good move overall, but maybe a little bit on a weak side. Outside of that, we get Brine, which is a water move, which is fairly unique for even a rock type, un unless you're a water rock, that is. That said, Brine makes for a decent C move overall. It's maybe not the strongest water move if your Pokemon or opponent are not below 50%. 
then it will boost the attack by 50% if the opposing Pokémon are below 50%. That said, we also have Gastro Acid, which nullifies any type of ability, so Gliscor, eat your heart out with Toxic. We also have Stockpile, which is a very good supporting move overall, since C Stockpile will actually ensure you to recover all of HP and boost both of your defenses as it's used. So yeah, overall, that's a very, very good move. Uh, when it comes to TMs, it doesn't get all the cool stuff, but it does get a few variants, which is definitely both Sludge Bomb and Sludge Wave, which definitely can be helpful. And outside of that, we also have the likes of Infestation, which makes you able to toxic stall possible Pokemon. And this could also, of course, overall be very, very beneficial. Now, when it comes to um, its egg move, there's where things start to shine a little bit, because it has a variety of move pools that does make it very unique. First of all, we have Barrier. Uh, which boosts your defense. Since you do have Amnesia and Barrier, these combinations could be very, very threatening. The overall stockpile would be the more desirable one. We also have Miracle, which actually enforces, of course, that you get hit by a special attack and you will actually retaliate doubled back. We also have Tickle, which lower your attack and defense. And don't worry about how it tickles. I do believe that's that's for somebody else to talk about because of the head form, like, yeah. Um, but the best part about Cradley is Recover. Synthesis, in all its glory, yes, it is a good recovery move, but the PP is not there as it is in Recover, and it is not as heavily nerfed by uh, Rain or Hail elements. So Recover, much, much more reliable, and overall would be the more desirable with this Pokemon. And when it comes to the filler moves in its tutor mood, the one I would say is the most valued here are Block. And we also have Pain Split, but quite frankly, you do want to get bulky all the time. Block is the one that stands out here the most, mainly because Block makes sure you can't switch out. So, such a station, really, depending on what route you're going to take, Block or Evastation can be very, very good overall response and definitely capitalize on Cradle's naturally defensive nature of the Pokemon itself, which makes it very interesting. Now with that said, let's look at what Torterra can bring to the table that Cradley cannot. Now before I talk about Torterra, I really need to mention one thing. Torterra also gets Stockpile and Tickle. I just want to have that said before I talk about the more unique move. It definitely should be stated though that both of these moves are much much more desirable on Cradley than Torterra. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the big deal here. Torterra gets Woodhammer. Woodhammer, strongest grass move in the game because of the physical side, and with 109 attack, yeah, it's a big deal to be able to hit that hard. And of course, with that extra HP on Torterra, it only makes it that much better. Now, that said, we also have Bite, we have Crunch, and then when it comes to actually its move pool and egg moves, Wonderland stated while Gastro Acid was a thing on Cradley, um, Torterra gets Worry Seed, and Worry Seed, of course, changed ability too, which basically means a Gliscor, yet again, eat your heart out. And outside of that, we have Sand Tomb, which works in the infestation, not as good, not as accurate, but it's there. Uh, and of course, we have one that is very, very desirable, which is Super Power, which is a very strong filler move that are able to capitalize on possible, of course, matchups that normal types could possibly punish this. And also, of course, the Ice type that it's stab in mind really just punish it a bit more if you don't rely on Stone Age. Super Power is your desirable choice. Outside of that, it really isn't too unique when it comes to filler moves. It does get Bullet Seed and Iron Head and Iron Tail, and also get access to the Lights of Outrage. But I do believe I only mentioned already the relevant stuff. One thing that really does, though, enforce Cradley to kind of fall short here and make um, Torterra a lot more desirable when it comes to playing a possible defensive role is that it actually get access to the likes of Leech Seed. I do believe Infestation Leech Seed would have been really cool in Cradley. It's very unfortunate it does miss out on that because it means a sand tomb leech seed is an option for Torterra. While it isn't the best for Torterra, it really should be stated here that Torterra at least gets it while Cradley does not. So what it comes down to between these two is whether if Torterra's strength is enough to capitalize on Cradley's lesser offensive presence but more defensively capable move pool overall and of course would recover make Cradley a bit more desirable defensively. This is what it basically boils down to. You, you choose defense over the offensive and quite frankly and this is one of those really weird dialogue since they both are slow pokemon they're both capitalized on defensive stats to be able to survive but these type combination really enforces them to be a lot more offensively threatening so with that in mind i really can't say anything else than torterra really has to be deemed strong between these two because it hits that much harder none of these pokemon even with all the defensive capabilities in mind 
don't have the typing combinations to stand out for out of Wi-Fi belt. They're not able to survive the onslaught that the defensive typing does enforce on them because they can't pull that off. So with that in mind, Torterra is a more offensively scarier Pokemon, therefore making it overall the stronger Pokemon between these two. And this is basically what it boils down to. This is actually breaking my heart because Cradley is awesome in so many ways. Just the typing does not allow it to be as incredible as it should have been. Now to Torterra's credit, Torterra is a very interesting Pokemon. The stabs a lot more better than Cradley's. This is not going out of the way. It's offensive stabs a lot stronger than Cradley. It's offensive options a lot better than Cradley. This is basically what it boils down to. Torterra has the option to be so much more than a defensive Pokemon. While it filled the defensive spot that it's forced to, this, uh, there's a stab combination just kind of forces it to be able to soak up particular hits and definitely just hard check most of the ground types that are in any tier. I mean, it is weak to a lot of stuff, yes. It also hurts a lot of stuff very well. This is not an easy Pokemon to switch into. Torterra is a dangerous Pokemon to be dealing head on. If you don't shake it defensively well, it is going to ruin your switch ins and overall might even sweep you due to it because it hits that much harder. It is just one of those Pokemon that stands out because of that. I don't think Torterra is getting enough credit. Uh, I think this is a Pokemon that is very, very easy to regard because the stab combination really does mean, as I said in the start of the video, a glorified lesser ground type. One really has to make sure to say this. It is stronger than any ground type in the game. It is able to deal with most of the ground types fairly well. It is able to deal with possible war types. It does like, of course, a filler move in ice. So with that in mind, Torterra is an immense threat and it's one of the few between these two at least, they actually can capitalize on Rock Polish and Sword Stance to be able to be even a more massive threat. And it only needs Earthquake and uh, and Woodhammer to be able to capitalize on most things. Stone Edge does make a good feeling move for possible flying, but even flying don't want to take a Woodhammer for this Pokemon is at plus two. There is no way in hell that we were able to do that. And it does make for a good offensive stealth rocker. So overall, while I would say the Cradle League has every possibility to be an incredible defensive Pokemon, Torterra has the capability to be both defensive and offensive. In the end of the day, that is what is most rewarding about a Pokemon. I really want to see Cradley and its typing flourish in the future because it has the capability of doing its typing great. But Torterra, overall, it has resolved the worst. It's definitely its abilities that keeps it down. Had it had thick fat, I don't think this Pokemon would have been uh, lessly used as it is today because it is a strong Pokemon. It still is a strong Pokemon. Just not filler moves for real, or doesn't fit most team basically. What I'm trying to say. So that's it, guys. What do you guys think? This was a tough combination for me of actually dealing with. I definitely believe that both of these Pokemon are very underrated and should be used a lot more because they're both great. But yeah, the typing combination, while unique, does hinder them quite a lot for a lot of situations. So yeah, guys, thank you all for watching and join us next time where we're gonna look upon these monsters.